Ich okay. bin jetzt soweit. Alright, wer fängt an? Ich kann es ich kann's halt machen und dann... Boah, hallo! <lacht> Bei mir heute aber auch sowohl auf Deutsch als auch auf Englisch ist mein Hirn irgendwie nicht. Ja. Das hat keinen äh, Access zu meinem Sprachzentrum. <lacht> Also Kein Access. Ist, ja, also ich weiß, was ich sagen will, aber es kommt irgendwie nicht raus und zwar auf keiner Sprache. Das ist dann auch ja. irgendwie nicht hilfreich. Na nervig. Ja. Okay. Hä? Did you get that? I'm so also ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. You only understand train station? It's all Greek to me. Understanding train station. Living between cultures with Josh and Faye. Welcome back to a new episode of Understanding Train Station, everyone. I'm Feli. And I'm Josh. Welcome back. We are super happy to have you guys here with us this week. We have a fun episode that I'm really looking forward to you guys getting um, to listen to. This week, we have an interview, which I know that lots of you guys really enjoy these interview episodes just as much as we do. Um, but today, we're actually interviewing two people, which is uh, really fun. They're a couple. And uh, Faye, maybe you can talk a little bit more about how we ended up uh, finding them and what we're going to talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, so in the last few months, we haven't really been um, super good about going through all of our emails and our Instagram DMs, but we did clean all that up like recently, a couple of weeks ago. So if you did get a response from us on Instagram, like three months delayed, <laughs> that's on us. But we finally went through everything and we read everything and now we're kind of up to date and we will read everything again from now on. Um, but that was actually kind of part of one of those emails that got lost a little bit in our um, email inbox was from them. So uh, our guests are Jen and Yvonne from Simple Germany and they messaged us a few months ago because they actually mentioned our podcast in one of their videos because they help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. That's kind of their slogan that they start every video with and like that's on their website. Um, so yeah, to sum it up, um, they're um, a lesbian couple. Um, Yvonne is from Germany, but she lived in other parts of the world before. And Jen is from Guatemala and then ended up living in Germany. And they now live in Düsseldorf together and they try to help other expats um, handle all these struggles that are thrown at you a little bit more easily, like opening up a bank account or um, all the registrations that you have to go through, finding a cell phone provider, all those things, or finding an uh, apartment, even more important. They help them with all these things. They have amazing guides on their website, simplegermany.com, and they also have a YouTube channel. And yeah, they mentioned um, our podcast as, um, what was it called exactly? Like the top 10 expat creators or something like that. I'm gonna I think it was resources the... for podcast or for, for expats. Yeah, and I think they mentioned like different creators or mm -hmm. like um, yeah, yeah. Uh, pages and channels that are great resources to listen to. And we were one of them. So we felt Which, very thank honored. You for that. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the shout out. Um, and so that's kind of how we got in touch with them because they sent us an email about like, hey, just so you know, we gave you guys a shout out. Exactly. And I was really excited to see that because I, I knew their channel, their YouTube channel yeah. from before from watching some of their videos. And um, it's always fun, especially when you're a creator and in this type of space to have exchanges with people that are doing similar things. So we were really excited to have the opportunity to talk to them this week, especially yes. with it being Pride Month as well. Um, we got to talk about some LGBTQ issues, um, as well as just their lives and how they ended up doing what they're doing. So we hope that you guys enjoy this episode. And one thing that was really cool, too, um, is, I mean, we're all from different countries, basically. So it's three different cultural backgrounds, three different languages. Yes, yeah, so it's really cool to have Jen on because she's from Guatemala and she's only our second person from Latin America on the podcast. Um, and then, of course, with like English and German and Spanish, um, it's like a whole language and culture mix right there, which actually brings me to a little information that we have for you guys. In case you want to improve your language skills, especially with summer being here and travels being right around the corner, um, maybe you already have travel plans or you still want to plan some travels, but you're unsure about traveling to a country where you don't speak the language, we have a great tip for you because Lingoda is hosting their language sprint right now, which means that you can actually significantly improve your language skills in just two months, 60 days. And the best thing is that you can even get some money back for it. So it's really there to encourage you to do like an intensive language challenge um, because really when like learning a language, one of the worst things you can do is like only do it like once a month or like every few weeks because then you kind of have to start over every time and uh, what's really important about learning a language is kind of like sticking with it intensely and also being surrounded by it a lot and you get both of those things with the Lingoda Sprint Challenge and if you do the regular sprint you take 15 classes a month for those two months And then if you actually follow through and follow all of the requirements, you end up getting 50% cash back. So you get 
half of your money back if you follow all of that. Or if you want to even take it one step further, you can even do the super sprint, which means that you'll do 30 classes a month for those two months. So it'll pretty much be one class every day. And then if you do follow through with all of that and meet all of the requirements that you should look at before you do this, um, you're going to get 100% cash back. So all of your money back. So basically you're going to have a free language course and also an intense one that's going to help you significantly in your language skills. And one of the cool things with Lingoda is they're super flexible. It's all online, so you're going to be able to find classes uh, whenever you want to take a class. Yeah. Their teachers are all native level, so you're going to be learning from people who really know what they're talking about, and that's super important that you feel confident in your instructors when you're learning a language as well. If you're interested, there are a variety of languages that are offered. They have English, they have business English if you want to improve your English in the business context. They have Spanish. French or German. So for this episode, Spanish and German would obviously be helpful. So if you are interested, make sure that you take advantage of the voucher code that we have for you. It is UTS June. You can find the link in the description box or in the show notes of this episode. And with that voucher code, you get 20 euros or $25 off the deposit. And with that, let's jump to the interview. Well, welcome both of you. Uh, we're super excited to have you. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Well, thank you for having us, and yeah. uh, we are also Likewise. a bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were super excited. Just um, We were just talking before we started recording as well, just to have the influences, especially for me, from the two, like, I'd say cultures. Obviously, each Latino country has its own culture, but generally la Latino culture and then also the German culture. So this interview is especially exciting for me. Um, and then also... Uh, with it being Pride Month, it's fun to talk to some other LGBTQ people. Um, I haven't talked about that on the channel before, but I'm also gay. Um, so it's really exciting to... Yeah, I know. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> not even surprise, but this was my uh, yeah. my silent clap was like, oh, congratulations okay. for, uh, <laughs> for uh, coming out to our uh, audience. Yeah. So, um, but like I said, with it being Pride Month, it's fun to talk um, about that as well with you guys. So I'm super excited for this conversation. I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. Um, but I think a good way of us starting is maybe you guys can introduce yourselves. We've already said a little bit about you guys and what you do, but maybe you can tell us and tell everyone else <laughs> more detailed what you do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Should we do it like how we do it on YouTube? So, That's your cue. I mean, no, like I introduced myself first. Okay, so hey, well, my name is Jen, uh, actually Jennifer, but Jen for shirt, only my mother actually calls me Jennifer. <laughs> um, I was born and raised in Guatemala. I actually left Guatemala in 2010 to Europe. Uh, actually, Budapest was the very first city where I lived mm. for a couple of years until I moved to Dusseldorf, uh, where I found a job. And it's been almost 10 years later, and I'm still here. Um, yeah, That's a I good found sign. a beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> I found a beautiful, a beautiful German wife. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm happy. You know, when, really whenever happy. you say that, people wonder whether you have like also an Italian yeah. and a Mexican and a Spanish and another know. wife. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. but you're the German one. That's for sure. <laughs> We've got those comments. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so I'm here. I'm very happy uh, with uh, you, who you're, you're going to introduce yourself shortly. So we run Simple Germany, actually, for the past almost two years, and uh, where we explain, actually, um, German bureaucracy and German life to internationals that arrive to Germany for the first time. Yeah. I'll exactly. That. Yeah. And I'm Yvonne. I'm German. Um, <laughs> however, I've actually also only moved to Dusseldorf in uh, 13. So that's also almost 10 years ago. And before that, I was abroad quite a lot. And mm -hmm. when I came back to Germany, I was like uh, my mid 20s. And I thought, OK, before nagging on, I was one of those Germans that always wanted to leave because <laughs> it's, you know, too bureaucratic, too boring, too, too whiny, too everything. Too German. And then I thought, I okay, feel you. <laughs> Let's give it a try because uh, I've only really experienced it as a as an adolescent. So um, let's give it a try. Let's actually get like a proper job, you know, like in an office and all. And uh, people, people meaning like my family and friends, gave me one year, and I'm here almost ten. So uh, yeah, hasn't been that bad actually. You found a Guatemalan <laughs> wife. <laughs> so you like it a lot better than you expected. Then I'm assuming. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it also for me took a, took took some time to, to settle in, really, uh, mm -hmm. and, and jump those bureaucratic hoops, but also um, finding friends again. And to be honest, uh, mm -hmm. it was the usual, I would say, it was like either a workplace, which was also difficult for me, yeah. or I really tried to also find a international crowd. So <laughs> yeah. that's actually also my go-to, um, because I still didn't want it to be too German. And right. yeah, that was, that was quite successful, I must say. <laughs> I think that's one cool thing, because... Um, 
we internationals when we're in Germany, we're always happy when we can make German friends mm. uh, because I feel like that's one thing that's really difficult yes. about being here is finding Germans that aren't already super integrated into an existing friend group. So yeah. props to you for reaching out to the internationals, which I know is probably something that you were looking for already. Exactly. Um, and then it's, it's mutually the beneficial. I feel just like you. For me, it's just as hard to crack into a German group that already knows them. Because the thing is, when, when you leave, like, you know, either as a high school exchange year or after, after college or whatever, and you go abroad or even leave your, like, your hometown area, you, I mean, at least for me, I didn't really stay in touch that much with my childhood friends in that sense mm -hmm. because our lives separated so much and we had so many different um, values and understandings of life. Um, so for me, coming back was just like, yeah, I had one or two friends that I talked up again, of course, and got to know again. But other than that, there was not that much yet left to come back to, you know what I mean? Other than my family, obviously. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. So did you go back to your hometown first? or Because you said it was your first time going to Düsseldorf, right? So you're not from right. Düsseldorf. No, I'm from Bonn. Ivan from Bonn. Yeah. <laughs> That's not too far away. <laughs> not too far away, exactly. Yeah. And uh, originally, actually, I tried to find a job in Cologne. Um, okay. because Bonn and Cologne just have so much more affinity. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. they didn't want me, didn't get a job there. Yes. And I got a job in Düsseldorf, where, you know, I was <laughs> like, boo, boo, you're going abroad, because for Bonn and Cologne, Düsseldorf is like, you know, like the, uh, yeah. um, the not-so-friendly city in that sense. There but, is a uh, big rivalry there, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, definitely. But uh, I moved here, and um, I actually like it a lot more than Cologne. <clears throat> I like Cologne, <laughs> but I prefer to live in Düsseldorf. How about oh, that? Oh, there you go. Yes. Nice, nice. So I've always been in the Rhineland, yes. <laughs> okay, so where did you live before? Which countries? So before the stands in Düsseldorf, I worked on cruise ships for four years. So mm -hmm. I can name you all the countries we would speak for a long time <laughs> okay. uh, because literally the cruise went around the world. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, um, cool. so, so that was pretty much it. And before that, doing the studies, you know, internships in Spain, France, uh, the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're in the US. What part of the, yeah, I was going to say, what part of the US were you in? Um, I studied actually in New York City one semester. Ah, okay. um, cool. That was kind of like my, my dream also back in the day. And uh, But I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for wow. a year as a high school exchange. Wow. Okay, that, I was, that, so I'm, that, that makes me happy because then you get two big contrasts of yes. the US and what things can be like. Yeah. And I've been to both. We went to see like your host family. Wow. And it's like very different to the US that I had experienced until then. I must say really cool. We also did a trip to New Orleans, which was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but definitely a different way of living, of even speaking, I would say. I <laughs> yes. couldn't always understand what people would say to oh, me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neither I do I. <laughs> yeah, I struggle with that. Which is so crazy, right? Yeah. So yeah. So that was fun. Yeah. Definitely. So <laughs> have you ever lived in the US or do you have any affiliation with the US, Jen? Because I feel like your English also sounds very American. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually have a long history with the U.S. as uh, the majority, I think, of Latino families do. So the majority of my family lives in the U.S. My oh, aunt okay. has lived there for the past, oh, my God, I think almost like 45 years or something. She wow. moved there very young. So she would always, every time I would have like holidays or uh, time off, she would request me, so to speak. So I would fly with her and spend summers and stuff there with my cousins. And we would only speak in English. And, you know, I, I wanted to like be very part of the of my cousins and their friends, right? Because they would sometimes make fun of my accent. So I would try very hard to imitate how they spoke. And I mm -hmm. think that helped me a lot to, to get rid of some Latino accent. Not always, but... It, I it mean, works. it's it's so, it's so, so slight. I mean, mm. like, it's, it's so close to being like, quote unquote, normal American. I, at yeah. first, I thought you were American. Wow. Well, um, I am American, if you want to see it well, from that yes, point of view. Sorry, yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I thought you were Estadounidense. <laughs> there you but go. No. Look at you, yeah. <laughs> But that's cool. So what part of the U.S. does uh, did you spend uh, your time in there or like where, where your family is located? Yeah, it's actually a small suburban area. Is it suburban or urban? What's it called? Suburban. It's called Clearwater in Tampa, uh, near ah, Tampa, okay. Florida. Mm -hmm. So it's in Florida. So it's where the sun is always shining and the beach is always nice. <laughs> very nice very cool very cool Cool. Um, I have a, another quick follow up question for Yvonne um, just out of curiosity which cruise ships or which uh, uh, how do you wait how do you say Reederei right yeah exactly how, what's yeah. the English word for that it's a cruise, cruise line. line ah yeah. cruise line oh yeah it's so much easier yeah yeah, um, yeah which, which uh, cruise line did you work for so I started at NCL, actually also based out of uh, New York back in the day. Okay. And there you, you, you know, it's the typical, the big, big passenger yeah. ship where you go mm -hmm. New York, Bermuda, Bahamas, New York, Bermuda, Bahamas for like three <laughs> months. I only had three months because I actually did that during my studies. And I loved it so much so that I continued after I graduated. graduated. And I did another 
two contracts with them. And then I changed cruise lines to Silver Sea, which is a very small luxury cruise line. So mm -hmm. very small ships, uh, mm -hmm. no more numbers, but actually passenger names that, that you learn. Um, okay. And that the beauty of those ships is that they go all over the world and they rarely repeat one route for an entire season. That's and that, of course, cool. as a working there, you get to see those beautiful places. And part yeah. of my job was also to accompany the guests on their excursions. So Not that bad. was pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a pretty good gig. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you say is the coolest place that you went to? <laughs> so hard to say. Um, I would say one has to differentiate it between like, do you mean cities, do you mean islands? But I would say the best cruise experience per se, if I have to pick one, uh, was the Amazon River in Brazil. Um, mm. So we went, literally went all the way into Manaus um, and all the way out of it again uh, for like one and a half, two weeks almost. Um, what made it more authentic is that the air conditioning broke. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously on a luxury cruise ship, not the oh best of things to happen. <laughs> but that, that just made it extremely authentic. Um, and mm -hmm. it was just such a different experience than being out on, on the ocean, um, especially with all the wildlife and what you hear and see. And it was yeah. pretty cool. Well, yeah, that, that sounds really cool. Like I, when I grew up, like we did a few cruises and unfortunately cruises have gotten this like bad image now, which mm. is really sad. I mean, for a good reason, of course, but I kind of like the good olden days where everyone was just ignorant and you could just go on a big cruise and not feel bad about it. We did a few as a family and I always thought it would be so cool to be one of those people that worked there and just like especially, I don't know what exactly you did, but especially the people that like got to work with the people like the... Exactly. Yeah, that was yeah. my job. Yeah. But yeah. I would say it depends highly on what your job is, whether it's mm -hmm. that cool or not. Yeah, um, yeah. And I definitely knew like there were a lot of, at least the cruise ships that I did, which were more like commercial cruise lines. Um, there were a lot of Filipinos that I know that they had to... Yeah, like, they're, they're there everywhere. I mean, that is one of their main industries. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just know that they didn't have the best working conditions, I don't think. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, not just the nationality, but I would, again, it depends on the, um, job the type of job you do. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I have one question before we kind of get more into the whole, like, simple Germany topic <laughs> and all of that. Um, just like a general question that we usually ask people, and I feel like in your <laughs> cases, it might be very interesting to hear. Um, so for each of you, what was, like, the number one biggest culture shock that you've ever experienced or maybe just like a very interesting story i'm assuming for jen that would probably be in germany and then for yvonne i have no clue like what that could be for you but i'm sure you've experienced many many culture shocks oh that is an interesting question actually i can actually share maybe the story where actually both of our cultures kind of shocked a little bit when we were starting to date mm -hmm. um, and that's that we were in a party with a lot of latin american oh. people okay. um, mm -hmm. and then we were sitting at a table we were speaking spanish and, and we had just been dating for what like a few months i think yeah. or something right um And then uh, we were speaking like about how to like learn German and if we all speak German, you know, just to feel more integrated. And at this point in my German life, I didn't really see as a super pressing matter that I had to super improve my German. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was saying like, yeah, I, I understand why German is important, but I think my German is good enough to to get by. And I think that should be enough. But the Latino stand of you was like, no, you should learn even more to be like even more native and integrate better to Yvonne's family, especially to speak mm -hmm. their language and so on. And I'm like, yeah, I understand, but I feel like it's good enough now. And it's like, no, Jen, you need to make more effort. So there was this like, I don't know how, like things got lost into that, that they kept on like pushing me for the, you have to be better, you know, for your partner and blah, blah. And suddenly Yvonne- This was all in Spanish. This was all in Spanish. <laughs> so suddenly Yvonne like stands up from the table and walks away and she doesn't come for like a good five minutes, six minutes. <laughs> and so all like the Latino friends are like, dude, like, <gasps> like Yvonne is super mad. She's probably like crying in the bathroom. You totally like broke her heart. You know, like, what is she gonna think? Like, oh, Oh, you, you said all the wrong things and obviously I started to get worried I'm like oh my god like okay I don't know if I want to be so sensitive in that case but I'll go check right <laughs> so I went everywhere in the house looking it was a house party Mm -hmm. for Yvonne and then I realized that the door for the toilet is closed and so I knock and I'm like Tata Yvonne are you in there and she's like yes and I'm like I'm so sorry like are you okay is everything she's like yeah I'm just scrolling through here through my phone you know like uh, <laughs> it was too much Spanish for me at the moment so I just needed a time alone for myself and I, I start like laughing so hard because this is so like the culture shock between like Latinos we being super over dramatic mm -hmm. and what are mm -hmm. you and the Germans being all like nonchalant like don't worry about it like what were you even talking about yeah you, you don't have to like super learn German right Now it, it will take time, I know, but it's fine. And that yeah. for me was such and a And I just needed a Latino break. So I just, you know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that makes so much sense. I feel like a lot of Germans do that when it gets too much for them. They just like go away you and you don't, really, yeah, you don't really yeah. have to worry about them. I feel like you don't really have to worry about a German being mad at you until they tell you. Because yeah, I, I don't exactly. think a lot of Germans get mad at you without telling you to your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that for me was a big learning like lesson, right? Because it's like mm -hmm. in Latin America in our culture, it's not okay to just 
spend time alone in that sense you know to walk mm. yeah. away from mm -hmm. from a social gathering just to be alone for a little bit it's mm -hmm. not it's somehow not like accepted in a way so of course the first thought is <gasps> drama like she's breaking up with you <laughs> like if it's the love of your life you should go yeah. fight for her and i was like oh my <laughs> god, oh my god. <laughs> that's hilarious and i was the most relaxed yep. yeah she was like oh, nonchalant, yeah. <laughs> that's funny what about you, Yvonne? Do you have a, an experience where you say, wow, this was a huge culture shock for me? Yeah, and I actually have to go like way back in my, in my, in my mind. Eating and frijolitos I, for the first time? <laughs> um, exactly. Not so much of a shock, I would say, more like of a taste, tasteful experience, which by the way, I love them, you know, nowadays, which you probably <laughs> see. Refried beans. In the, um, yes, but I would say I need to get back, go back to all the way to actually um, the high school exchange um, mm -hmm. when I was like 15. Um, and I don't know, Philly, how far you are familiar with that, but uh, those exchanges usually work with like an organization where you get like uh, have like a familiarization weekend beforehand where you get prepared what to do, what not to do. And, uh, you know, you can speak to um, other former high school exchange students to hear their experiences and all mm -hmm. that. But anyways, when you get there, you still have like, I mean, you're, you're not prepared. That's why you're going there. <laughs> yeah, right. um, and for me... The organization didn't do the best job, let's put it that way, which, mm. um, I mean, in the end of the day, it was like, like a blessing in disguise because it just made me learn and grow so much more than if everything would have gone smoothly. Mm. <laughs> um, but I remember vividly, so I didn't get my host family assigned right away, but I was told that I would stay with my, um, uh, what was the word? Like my area coordinator. Director. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My coordinator, mm. like for the first two weeks, and then I would move to my host family. The two weeks and the two months, there was no host family. Um, but what what was really a shock for me in that moment is that they just had me there because it was their job and not because they wanted to. Mm. And and there were comments as such. I mean, back in the day, I was like a competitive swimmer. So I actually trained like seven times a week and I was really just skin and, and muscles mm. um, and bones. And um, they pretty much told me and my parents back home that I was too expensive to find a host family because I ate too much. Wow. <laughs> wow, okay. And those were like things with like, damn, like this is this is weird. I mean, I'm just a 15 year old girl, you know, that's, that's crazy. That is just like eating regular portions. The thing is that they had four other children. I don't know how far and like they, they I had, I don't know. But uh, in that house, I had a few culture shocks um, mm -hmm. so much so that I was actually ready to pack my bags. Uh, I started packing and my dad told me, you know, just book whatever flight. I don't care. Um, but then actually the bosses of the coordinator sat me down, called me and gave me like this, not very motivating, more like, like, like they like truly shushed me. Like really, I would say like, like they, if they would have had a pan that like hit it over my head and kind of like told me, um, you got to adapt, like stop being so, so mm. special in a way, which I didn't even realize and you were I was. 15? This yeah, and I still didn't know what was going on, but, but this person like really, really, um, shunned me in a way so much. So it's like, you know what? Now I'm staying because now I have something to prove to myself, in a way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was the best thing that happened. Um, and, and it just really made me open my mind so much faster. Mm -hmm. But that was, I would say that was very two tough months. Yeah, so it's tough crazy. love. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I think it's cool that you like said, no, I have something to prove now, mm -hmm. um, despite the hard circumstance. But I think it's crazy. I know a lot of people who did exchange years and they loved their experiences. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. I hear a lot of those type of stories. Yeah, um, cool. And that's kind of how our exchange student ended up in my family as well as they had a very bad oh, experience at their first family. And I knew okay. him from school. And then I talked to my parents and I said, hey, do you think that we could take him in because he's going through a really rough time now? Um, and it, yeah, I'm, I'm super so sorry to hear that you had to go through that. But I mean, in the but end, again, it sounds like you learned from it. Exactly. And what happened is that actually my uh, my teacher, one of my teachers took me in. Yeah. So that oh, was, really? that was oh, pretty wow. cool. Yeah. And I, I loved the whole stay. Like I, I would definitely recommend doing it. And it was really cool and a wonderful experience. And um I think it's okay for everything not to go um, as planned, but definitely. maybe maybe a bit of a nicer start would be, would be good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That sounds really rough. So was that in New York then? No, that was in Baton Rouge. Southern oh, okay. hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> Which Gosh. I would have thought they're super like, host like I mean, it's yeah. usually Southern people tend to be warmer than, than Northern people, right? In mm -hmm. terms yeah. of hospitality and stuff. I think it was just but, the lack of organization from the organization part. Yeah. Probably. Wow, yeah. what a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that's a good redundant. example, though, of, of how, I mean, there's stereotypes and then of there's course, reality, not every, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah definitely. But, yeah, yeah. Was the organization German then? Yes. Okay. And the thing, the problem was that the, um, they, the, there was a German organization and they had a partner organization that was from the US. 
Mm -hmm. And also they had communication problems. Mm. So when I said something on my part to to them, they went back to the German organization. They went back to my parents. And what my parents got told was never something that I said. Mm. Um, So it was really just just a mess. Like still in post as the same. Exactly. (laughs) But it it ended up uh, being, you know, wonderful. And uh, I was still in touch with the the actual host family. Hmm. Okay, Um, good. Yeah, you said you visited visited. them. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So before we jump in, because I, I do want to talk about Simple Germany, too, but I, I like getting kind of a little bit more background about your guys' uh, personal lives, too, as much as you're willing to share, obviously. <laughs> but Jen, I, I, I was listening in one of your guys' videos that I can totally recommend if you guys want to get to know Jen and Yvonne closer or better. But you were, I, w- I would be interested in hearing more about how you ended up in Germany. I know that you said that you went via Budapest, but um, maybe you can talk a little bit about why Europe, why you wanted to to get to Europe and yeah, talk about that experience a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So ever since uh, I would say I, I remember in Guatemala, I've always wanted to leave the country for multiple reasons. Uh, quality of life, definitely, especially when you have the majority of your family living in the US, you see kind of like the discrepancies of what they can afford versus what I can afford, how much they work versus I have to work for like the same, you know. Um, also, like my, my, my sexual orientation is not accepted in Guatemala. There's a bit a big like ban like to even talk about, uh, talk about like um, LGBTQ plus topics and stuff like that. Um, so, but the big big reason was quality of life, which actually the 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 being gay is also plays part to that yeah, quality of life, obviously, right? Um, So actually, my original goal was to go to the U.S. Uh, However, because of the massive influx of immigrants from Latin America to the U.S., getting there a job or any legal residence is super hard um, Mm -hmm. unless you're like super qualified with, I don't know, maybe if I would have worked at the NASA or something. Not impossible, you know, but, you know, like where do I kind of like study such a thing in Guatemala? (laughs) So through the university after I graduated, which I studied hotel and restaurant management Mm -hmm. um, after I graduated, um, I was with the intention of working in hotels because I thought hotels are all over the world right so yeah. that should open doors however you uh, if you want to work in the front desk where it's actually the better positions you need to speak the local language right so mm. <laughs> i didn't consider that part plus i realized real quick that uh for me i didn't really enjoy working when everyone else was having a holiday um mm. it's very hard also work um so to whoever works in the service industry like super respect because i, yeah. I tried it and it was just too 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 much for me right um so then uh, through the university actually i found an internship in budapest to teach a tourism in English to like a, it's not high school it's like in German there's this also like when you do the Ausbildung Berufsschule Berufsschule like the, yeah. like the, the continued study like school a career sto- yeah career yeah school like a career thing. school so they graduate already from like high school or they're in the last year and then they can transition into tourism for another two years or something um, the thing is that when I arrived in Budapest like no one spoke English really so mm-hmm. I am there being an English teacher with no knowledge on how to be an English teacher <laughs> um, <laughs> and actually Budapest was a big culture shock in every sense I would say like weather wise people wise uh, mm. I come from a very warm giving happy uh, place and Budapest for me was like contr- like totally the opposite mm. um, so after like a year and a half uh, I managed to find another job in actually like a call center for service desk and then my eyes was set on Germany I actually don't know why I think I think I researched once like best uh, quality of life in Europe and Germany yeah. popped up and then I started <laughs> reading about Germany and I'm like oh that that sounds that sounds actually very interesting that's good and in Guatemala I learned actually German for a few a few years it doesn't, so show, interesting. <laughs> it doesn't show my German knowledge because you know I don't have I think the language learning genes I can learn other stuff quicker but anyways um, but it wasn't easy moving to from Budapest to Germany for example I applied to tons of jobs because I has also had limits to what I could apply to right mm-hmm. I s- spoke Spanish I spoke English very little limited maybe none German So the jobs were very, like, Mm. very, very difficult to find until I found one opening for a company in Dusseldorf that they were looking for a customer service representative for their e-commerce shop, which uh, the candidate needed to speak fluent Spanish and fluent English. And I'm like, that that's me. (laughs) So I applied. And I mean, when I received that phone call, I I remember specifically, I was sitting kind of like in a beer garden in Budapest. And when I received Mm -hmm. the phone call, and the manager told me you got the job, I I just couldn't believe it. Like I almost started like crying in the middle of the whole beer garden. It was really like a dream come true. And then I packed my bags and I moved to Dusseldorf. And that's how I landed here. Very cool. Yeah, that's a, that is a cool story. So how was it? It was a pretty complicated moving from um, Budapest to Germany um, bureaucratically or was yes. it like, OK, 
No, I would say yes, because especially when I went to the embassy the first time, they told me, oh, your paperwork should be ready in like three weeks. So I quit my apartment. I quit my job. I moved actually in with a friend with the promise, like, I'll be out in a week. Mm -hmm. And actually the whole paperwork took like two months or two and a half oh, months. No. So I was like a guest in this friend's house uh, for over a week, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would call all the time and they're like, oh, no, we're still waiting for the decision from Dusseldorf. And then people in Dusseldorf would call. Oh, we're still waiting for the decision from Berlin because they would send. So it was it was a very, very, very long process. Mm -hmm. But I would say once I got that like residence or like that visa to come as a worker, then it was like a lot smoother because I was like I had jumped that first hurdle, I think, which is the okay. hardest most of the mm -hmm. time. So that was then your first experience with the German bureaucracy, which yes. I know you guys talk a lot about <laughs> at, uh, on Simple Germany to help other expats um, struggle with that a little bit less. So, yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit about how you ended up um, founding Simple Germany and why or what was like the one experience that made you think, hmm. okay, this is this is necessary. The Auslöser. Yeah, yeah, the Auslöser. <laughs> like, what was like that that the um, spark? The spark exactly that made the you inciting incident. finally. The found that <laughs> so i think i i have that story right yep so that story also <laughs> goes to me i was actually working in a very um it doesn't matter i was working here in a company in dusseldorf and then a co-worker from egypt told me once like with a very scared face like jen do you have a minute and i'm like yes of course let's go to a meeting room so i went to a meeting room she closed the door and i'm like what's what's happening right like i mean we're co-workers she's not like a supervisor so i know she's not firing me or anything <laughs> um, and she's like dude like i i have a very serious question for you and i'm like yes please go ahead um so i just went to the bank And the bank person told me that I need to get, I don't know how many insurances. I don't understand anything. Um, I don't know what to do. Is this, am, is it illegal if I don't get any insurances? Because it, it, the person made it sound like it's, it's super illegal and I should consider it. But like, why, why should I? You know, and that for me was like, I, I had to laugh in front of her face, unfortunately, <laughs> because I'm like, oh my God, this is so Germany, you know, like, like uh, you go to a bank and then, you know, they force you kind of like or motivate you very strongly, strongly. To, to, to find insurance. Mm -hmm. So then I came home and I told the story to Yvonne. And then uh, we realized that that's part of the story. You can continue with the rest. Yeah, that was that was one. Uh, that was like one. I would say it was a set of events. Um, and also, we were honestly looking to create something online. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had other um, other topics and other ideas that we've actually already pursued, but that just never um, found an audience. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. to, in that sense. And then as the set of event with with your colleague happened and as we sat down actually uh, we tend to have our kind of like eye-opening conversations over dinner in a way <laughs> and then one day i was just saying you know what whenever we are at friends uh, to have dinner um usually our friends are also into like german mexicans german whatever uh, couples mm -hmm. uh and the topic always ends up going over culture differences and and experiences mm -hmm. that that you had with other latinos where again They show me an email and they think it's super rude and they're totally upset about it. And it's like, like ah, I'm gonna, ah. and then they show it to me and I'm like, whoa, that was actually quite an idea. And, you know, we can personally so, identify with that. So that, that's, that's all, always the, the center of conversation. Mm. And we're like, why don't we, if, if already that's kind of like part of our life, that's what we're living. Why don't we make that public with mm. actually the possibility of helping people? And, yeah. and those were all the events that came together. And that's kind of how we, how we started it. And I think also what helps is that I'm usually like the lost international and everything. And then Yvonne comes to the rescue because she really can explain <laughs> things in very simple ways for me to have understood well, also sometimes. a lot of things. Sometimes. <laughs> well, <laughs> the majority of times, let's say. <laughs> so that obviously helps a lot that, you know, I have kind of like a lot of the questions, even without you knowing the answers. But sometimes it's just like a cultural perspective that you lack when you don't have. It's easier for me to find the answer. Yeah. 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 But also like to see how you think about things. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had that, uh, like Josh and I even did with like emails, for example, what you just yeah. mentioned. I remember like Josh even calling me. I was uh, so upset. Were you already in Germany then? Or was <laughs> no, I was living in the US at that oh, point. Okay. But I mean, I'd been been back and forth and yeah. call it the colleague in person, but yeah. Yeah, and so like you were working with people in Germany um, in the German location of your company and you called me and you were like, Fedi, I do not know if this is a rude email or not. I need your German help. <laughs> But you were really, really upset by the email. <laughs> it, hit a, it hit a nerve with me because it just was so unnecessarily direct. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Fanny was like oh super super like on point good email communication yeah, yeah. I don't even remember anymore exactly but I think I was like well it kind of depends on how your relationship with the person is yeah. it, I could see it go both ways it mm. could just be a completely normal just very n neutral email or if you're already kind of on weird terms with the person it could also be kind of like a passive aggressive yeah. one but and yeah. which one was it <laughs> 
I don't remember it, anymore. It was it was more passive aggressive. We had to have, <laughs> oh. have another conversation. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, that like definitely happens like a lot. And as you said, like, that's kind of what we did, right? That's what I did with my YouTube channel. That's what we did with this podcast, just like taking our um, everyday personal conversations and um, put them online and like help other people with them a little bit, except like we're not really um, helping people as much as you guys do in in terms of like actually giving them like a guide, like here's step Mm -hmm. one, step two. I like to think we give the emotional support. Yeah, (laughs) which we also need. (laughs) We just have more of these like uh, everyday conversations that we have. But like, yeah, you guys really have this amazing structured guide on your website. Um, What's the URL? Actually, simplegermany.com. Dot Dot com. com? Okay, I wasn't quite sure if it was like something more complicated. Um, So, yeah, for I know that we have a lot of people listening um, that are either trying to move to Germany soon Mm -hmm. or that already live in Germany as an expat. So if you did not know about Simple Germany, definitely check it out. Um, Both your YouTube channel and your website are super helpful. I feel like your website is maybe even a little bit more um, helpful when you actually have to search for one specific topic. Um, Because you can just like, yeah, obviously use the search function. Scroll through. Yeah, 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 scroll scroll through. Um, So, yeah, that's just like such a helpful way of like having everything listed. Um, Quick question. (laughs) Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yvonne, what you just said, which other topics did you um, try getting into before (laughs) that didn't work out? I'm just curious. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. So we actually tried uh, like a a travel app um, before COVID. Um, like the whole but, app, like you programmed it and everything. Well, we we that wanted was the plan. to, but yeah. um, we uh, we only reached it. So, so we actually did like user tests. So we actually went out to cafes and met up with strangers where we put hangouts before, and they could contact us and did like these user tests and all kinds of things. So okay. that was very very interesting. Also a lesson, a lot to learn. I would say. I would yeah. say usability tests. Usability tests. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so that was one of them. But then we realized, hmm, how are we going to communicate this to people? We need investors. We don't want investors. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So that was off the table. Uh, then we also went down the um, blog way in a, another a travel kind of like was always the topic. Um, and we love to camper van in a way. Mm-hmm. But mm. back until then, we had only rented them like in the US and in Australia. So yeah. it was about renting camper vans and how to like plan that. Um, but then we realized also, because hmm, uh, the next trip that we had planned, I suddenly started not planning the route in the way that what we wanted to see, but more like what the internet mm. wanted to see. Mm. And I really didn't like that, the realization. So I was like, how about we stay away from something too private in a sense? I mean, obviously, we're still talking very much about our private life. We're yeah. sharing a lot. Yeah. But that is our life. And that is not like we are vlogging about an activity that we're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then you're doing it just for the camera or just for the exactly. audience. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we we realized very quickly that we wanted that time for travel just for ourselves without actually yeah. to use that time to disconnect fully from anything. Yeah. Um, and we even tried YouTube uh, for oh that. Oh my god! For that. Don't, call, don't 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 tell them. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell the name. Well, no, we even tried know. <laughs> Oh my god! And those videos. I mean, they're, they're oh, yes. are they still up there? So it's they're not still like up there. it's a different channel than the simple German so channel. Was, oh, yeah. And this was yeah. travel okay. related. <laughs> Mm. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the quest is on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm sure some people will find it. Yes. <laughs> if it's still out there, it will be found. It will be found. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> That's so cool. So then, uh, was it about two years ago that you finally um, started Simple Germany? Yeah. Yes. So we started first the website, actually, to write uh, guides and to create content, again, for when people were searching to hopefully find it and, and not yeah. feel so stressed or alone and have English information. Because mm-hmm. unfortunately, the, a lot of the information that sometimes is in English, it's very from websites that really looked that they were built in the, like the 1990s. I mean, it's true. It's, it's very like outdated. So you think you don't know, like, is this up to date or is this mm-hmm. just a bad design and Scheidung, right? Like bad design decisions made. Um, right. So we wanted to break from that a little bit and 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 be more like simpler and more concise that you would actually know okay this is up-to-date information and it looks a little bit more modern in a way um and then after that we debated a little bit should we start youtube should we not start youtube oh we're not so sure oh uh you know because we had some experience with this other channel um Mm. and we went for youtube actually and to our surprise it actually was uh quite well received um so that obviously motivated us to keep on doing more videos um yeah and that's how the whole thing has grown I, I, that's that's really cool. I remember the first. I think the first video I saw of you guys was uh, the noises that Germans make, and I thought that was. Really, really <laughs> I haven't funny. seen that one. Yeah, I, what I, I forget do some, we make? I forget some of the details um, because oh, it was ha. a while ago. Yeah, like oh ha, uh, <laughs> like, like it's more like these um, exclamations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like tuck tuck. Exactly. <laughs> and, tuck tuck. 
Or Tja. the so. Tja. So, <laughs> yeah. That one was actually not part of it. Then we yeah, didn't know that one. Come and ask for that, yeah. For, for, for part two that will come yeah, soon. There you go. We have a list for part two as well, yeah. <laughs> but that's one thing that I like that you guys do is you do the very, very structured content that gives you very clear, helpful tips. But then you also have the fun stuff that's like, mm. oh, these are the not things that you have to know to survive, but things that will enrich your experience. Just help, yeah. help you understand yeah. maybe the context of a certain conversation a bit better. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> um, I actually have a question like, what is the number one topic? Topic that you feel like expats usually need help with or like I don't know if you get questions also from your audience what's like the number one question that's a hard one actually. so I would say it depends because also mm. our our viewers and readers it's um, kind of like they, they split in two parts mm -hmm. um, the ones that uh, similar to you to your um, audience that um, is still on the quest to move mm -hmm. um, and even there there is a split those that have already found a job and those that are still looking for a job mm -hmm. so I would say in the last section the looking for a job is definitely a number one topic Mm. Um, but then, of course, also once you know you're moving, this whole, oh my God, what do I do now? Um, so this, what do I need to do when first, um, mm -hmm. this entire order, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and then next to the job, the number one topic is finding a flat. Yeah. Okay. Where to live is a really big, big challenge. Because it's just difficult for anyone, I would say. Yeah. Whether <laughs> yeah. you're um, uh, experienced or not. It's just uh, the market. But obviously, mm. if you're completely new to the culture, don't speak the language, it's uh, it's next level difficult yeah 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 definitely intimidating. yeah especially if you're trying to find your own flat i think it's much much mm. e easier we talked about this in previous For interviews with other people too yeah if like mm. what josh did and what many other people do is like find a vg that's like much much easier but if you're trying to sign your own contract i know that yeah. that's quite challenging Definitely, especially challenging, like, okay, if you're single, you can totally opt for the VG option. But if you're moving with the family, for example, yeah. Yeah. there you That's kind of really definitely need to find, yeah, yeah. Mm. like your own apartment. And obviously, yeah, and there like comes the question, some ask for Schufa, but wait, I don't have Schufa because I'm not in Germany. And they ask for the Anmeldung, but I can only do the Anmeldung once. So then it becomes right. like the chicken and egg situation where you're like in a loop um, that it's not so easy always to, to find the way. And every case yeah. is so individual, right? Everyone yeah. has mm -hmm. such a specific case where, you know, maybe the there's a relocation agency that helps or the company helps with going to the bureaucratic offices. Um, maybe sometimes the company also helps to find an apartment temporarily. Mm -hmm. Everyone has such an individual case that it's, you know, it's really hard to kind of like encompass everything. So we provide like general guidelines that at least, you know, like the backbone or the base mm -hmm. yeah. of where you can Try start. Try to be un, like, like as general and as, as helpful as possible so that everyone can have a picture and then to, uh, like kind of like adjust it to their case. Yeah. Mm. yeah, you give them the tools. Do you then also um, do like individual consulting with people? We no, don't. No. We do okay. not. Yeah. Also, because we're not like also legally um, allowed to give direct advice or recommendations okay. on what to do. Depending on the topics. Uh, yeah. they, I mean, we're not licensed brokers or, or, mm -hmm. or tax or, or consult consultants, consultants, or, consultants or, whatsoever. Yeah. So that's one reason. But also, I mean, this we, we're a two woman show. Um, I mean, you <laughs> probably know how time consuming things are yeah. uh, to, to create content, to research. Um, so that's just that's just not the priority no yeah. but but rather mm -hmm. create the best content we can for the yeah. the, the most amount of people um and uh, go that way yeah. so um do you both have full-time jobs right now <gasps> oh you haven't this seen our last video because we <laughs> got into the whole uh, topic of uh, how much time content creation takes which yeah, yeah, yeah it does take a lot of time usually like double or three times the amount of time that other people expect or even more mm. than that and even usually double the time that you expect yourself i feel like that's Definitely. my personal experience <laughs> Yeah. So actually, funnily enough, like two weeks ago, was it or a week and a half? No, two weeks ago, weeks ago we yeah. launched, uh, we released a video a little bit more of a personal note where we actually announced that since January, I've joined full time Simple Germany. So we're both full time uh, from this year onwards. Um, yeah. It's very even cool. exciting. Very I, exciting. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. I did not see that video. I don't even okay. know that you had addressed that. No worries. <laughs> but that's so cool. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. Uh, I'm assuming you just uh, work from home then? Well, that was actually part of the video too, because uh, compared to our other, <laughs> we'll link other, the video in. The <laughs> <laughs> but compared to our other videos that you have seen, uh, we don't have the wooden background anymore of our apartment, mm -hmm. um, because uh, for sanity's sake, to be honest, I mean we love each other very much, but <laughs> with COVID and and home office and everything full time, two years in that tiny noisy hot flat that we have, it was just too much. Mm -hmm. And um, look, like looking for a new flat, um, that would have been way. Yeah, way too big of a step, I would say. Mm -hmm. So we looked for an office and we found an office, which we're sitting in right now. Yeah, um, nice. And from where Very we cool. are working, yeah. Yeah, 
Definitely. Because also like our space, we have one bedroom, that's where we sleep. <laughs> and then we have like an open space and that is the everything space. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where mm -hmm. we have the living room. We have, uh, we used to have our office there. That's where we used to do like home workouts. That's where the we, laundry dries. The laundry dries. <laughs> you know, it's like this one open space that's for everything. So if you like spending 24 hours, I mean, it was not 24 hours, obviously, but the whole work day there, it became very... And there was also um, no cut, you know, there was yeah. just no... Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I know the struggle. Like during COVID, <laughs> I lived in um, a house with four other roommates and we, we had a lot of space, but I had like my bedroom and mm. we did have like a living area. But basically what I did all day, I was I worked in my bedroom. I slept in there. I worked yeah. out in there. Um, mm. Yeah. And I, at some point I was like, wow, I cannot do this anymore. So what I did after that was um, in the U.S. it's so common to have like a yearly lease. So mm -hmm. when the mm -hmm. year was up, basically, um, one of my roommates moved out. And I was like, instead of giving that away to another roommate, I'm just going to take that other As roommate's office. office. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I couldn't do it anymore either. Yeah. I felt yeah. so locked in, even though I had yeah. the privilege of like, a, you know, living area. And we had a mm. dining room, too. Like we had all this extra space, luckily. But at the end of the day, like that's not where I worked or did like exactly. all these other things so definitely yeah, I and i would say <laughs> relates i don't know but i don't know if like, a lot of people talk about this but one of the things that probably you don't hear so much is that when you become like a full-time creator you kind of also become a very um how do you say this like not private but you become very individualized how do you say this like because when you go to an office there's like a whole social gathering mm. there right you have your co-workers you have your boss you go to the canteen and have lunch like there's a whole social thing but mm. when you pull out as a self-employed or like creator in this case it just becomes you suddenly right yeah, very right. isolated yeah. isolated is the word thank you josh yeah, yeah. you become yeah. very isolated from everyone and for me it has been amazing to leave home you know we have a very nice walk to the office actually you know like arrive to the office we have a, a co-worker actually the guy that uh, rents the office for us uh, he's a super nice guy so it's it's it's, it's a different different pace and a different mm -hmm. rhythm to the day than just waking and up, having breakfast, sitting on the desk and working, shutting the computer down, going to the couch. Yeah. And also myself. this, I mean, it's a, it's a small room, but it's big enough mm -hmm. and it's quiet. I mean, mm -hmm. we have like, it's a quiet street. There is no tram mm -hmm. or anything, which is at home. And recently there have been three massive constructions also. So mm -hmm. um, we need to have the windows open in summer, otherwise you <laughs> suffocate. And with yeah. that, yeah. it's just constant noise during the day. So it's really nice to have this, um, yeah, be able to, to leave that and um go focus somewhere else <laughs> and it makes it hard to record too from a personal experience i feel like it's also probably very helpful that you have a separate location for private life and work life mm -hmm. so that the work doesn't come home with you all the time right yeah which this, that's my that's my uh, situation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i like i work basically like on the weekends at night it's like that's kind mm. of yeah how it works for me yeah, well, we also mm -hmm. work on the weekends and at yeah. night sometimes as well. Yeah. But like you said, it's good to have this space at least that we can do that work here. And when we reason. shut off, it's yeah, it's it's time for like us both individually, yeah. but also as couple, as a couple, right? Well, maybe moving away from simple Germany, unless you guys have any other final comments that you would like to make on it. Of course, we encourage everyone to go check it out because it's really cool. <laughs> Thank uh, you. And, the, and the information that you guys have there is very, very helpful. Oh, that's what I was going to mention, actually, because before we we were we started recording, I mentioned that we were helping Anna, who you guys know on the channel, um, who is a Ukrainian refugee, quote unquote, she lives with us currently. Um, but she recently was trying to open up a bank account. And I think she could have used your guys's video because she had a very, very German experience with it. She went to, yeah, I guess I can say it, Spakasse, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she arrived and said, I want to open up a bank account. And then they said, okay, no problem. Um, then they said, we'll, we'll set up an appointment for you. But there was no one in the, in the office. I mean, it was two tellers and that was it. And the next available appointment was in two weeks oh, no. <laughs> yeah. for a bank account. <laughs> Damn. And so, mind you that the traditional banks like that, like their opening hours are super random as well. It's like Monday, yeah. Tuesday from nine to like 11, then Wednesdays from like three to five. And there's like super weird opening hours. So it's not like, you know, you have from nine to five to choose. It's <laughs> and then she went to another bank close by on the same day. And um, it was she went there. It was a bank. And it's also it's like the Deutsche po or Deutsche, what is it? Postbank? Postbank. Yeah. Uh, Postbank yeah. Okay. Um, so she went there and they said, oh, the banker person, they, they don't come that often anymore. Mm. Oh, I mean, wow. that Whoa. is actually a thing. Like a bank uh, locations in Germany have been closing. Yeah. Has yeah. Been closing. Yeah. Also here. Yeah. 
Yeah. Definitely. Well, if she's still looking for a bank, actually the one, because it, there's online banking that is mm -hmm. in English, uh, but unfortunately they don't accept all nationalities. Like for yeah. example, Guatemala is not accepted by everyone. However, mm -hmm. the one that we've had success with at least is Comet Bank, because you uh, can okay. do the whole application online so mm -hmm. that you don't have to go to the person. The only thing you need to go to a bank is when you need to identify yourself, because they need to prove yeah. that your ID is what you are. Um, mm -hmm. And for that, you don't need an appointment. You just go there, identify yourself, and then bam, your bank account is open. I'll definitely uh, pass on that in information yeah. there because I, that's exactly the issue is I'm used to being able to help people who come from privileged countries where it's mm. easy just with your passport to prove your identity but that doesn't work for every country yeah, yeah. yes definitely we also, have a YouTube video and a guide step by step on how to open and especially for banking because we're just on a topic there their nationality matters I would say most mm. Um, mm. along with any other financial um, like I would say the whole banking world um, yeah. so we've actually recently because we've also know I mean obviously we're learning along the way a lot and we've mm -hmm. learned that along the way so recently we've added also a link uh, and also in our comparison a table uh, a whole filter or like a, um, like, a, like a criteria which nationalities are accepted and mm -hmm. with a link mm -hmm. to to find out are you on the list before you even make the effort of trying to yeah. apply mm -hmm. um, because that is such a dividing factor and there are also in our guide there are banks that accept pretty much everyone, like Comerzbank, mm. and there are banks that only accept 45 nationalities. Which is, yeah. Um, just it's because crazy. of, and that's, that's, but it's also often not the bank's fault per se, but it's um, the service provider they use to verify the uh, ID. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. due to like money, fraud and laundering, not all passports in the world have the same security features. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to the actual passport and not to the nationality or mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. per se. It's really just, that's, that's the reason why. So interesting. I never knew yeah. that that was an issue with opening a bank account at yeah. all. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's also, that's crazy. Uh, 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 yeah, it's also a roller coaster. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. Like I said, it's in, coming from a privileged country like the U.S. It, I didn't have any issues with it, but uh, yeah, it definitely opens nice. up your eyes. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm glad that we brought that up because then this was a perfect example of how informed you guys are when it comes to these topics and you guys, can get a little, <laughs> our viewers can get a lot of information from you. But one thing that I wanted to talk about as well is kind of just queer life or LGBTQ hmm. plus life um, in our respective countries and what our experiences have been like that because it is Pride Month. We managed to record this during Pride Month, <laughs> which maybe that's even a first good starting place. I don't understand in Germany how Pride like goes over months. Like you have Christopher Street Day events in June and you have them oh. in July. At least that's my perception. Aren't they usually just in July? Maybe, okay, maybe I in think, Germany they're just in July. I but. think it's kind of, yeah, I feel like at least for me growing up in Germany, and this is probably the last thing I'm going to say, because other than that, I don't have that much <laughs> to say about this topic, but um, at least not from personal experience. But uh, I never like really knew about Pride Month, at least not from like the German perspective until I really came to the US, because that was yeah. just not really a term in Germany. It was really just CSD, Christopher I said that super German, Christopher Street Day. <laughs> Christopher um, Street Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I think is, is in July. And that's when like all the events hmm. usually take place. So I don't even know if there is anything going on in June in Germany at all. But here in the US, it definitely June is the Pride Month. Yeah, I agree with you, Haley. So um, the second everything you said, so there is no real month mm -hmm. per se. It's mm -hmm. more like, like summer pretty much is the season. Mm -hmm. And I would say the dates vary. Um, so for example, and to be like to be really frank, like we don't follow the calendar. Mm -hmm. um, we're not we're not really we're not very involved with the scene in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, but we always come by the Rhine where the here in Düsseldorf the CSD is, which is like the Pride. Yeah. Um, and it was last weekend. So that was still in June. Okay. But, so but that I was wrong. Know. So it does take place in <laughs> maybe June. It also. Changed, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe it changed. Maybe it changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe it changes every year. I, we don't, like I said, I don't know every year what it was. And then we just mm -hmm. see it because we pass by. But I do know because a friend told me that next week is Cologne. Um, okay. So, and Berlin's probably also at some point, what happened already is going to happen in the next weeks. Um, but I also remember because back in the day, I happened to be in Madrid by accident on Pride. Hmm. on that weekend By it's accident. usually also a weekend By yeah accident. I didn't it, it wasn't planned to be. <laughs> um, it wasn't planned and that was also in the summer so it's usually the summer mm -hmm. where, where, mm -hmm. where, where you know the parades and celebrations happen got a lot of information there <laughs> <laughs> but no I mean so that I stand corrected uh, but th I think that's one thing at least from the American perspective that was kind of weird for me moving here hmm. is I'm used to hearing about pride month um, yeah. and here it's Pride Month isn't a thing. Isn't um, a thing, yeah. It's and where every the city has their own date. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I know, I think in Munich it's July 16th. Mm. So it's, mm. and I think Vienna just had theirs last weekend. It's mm. all over the place. See, but, that's why I probably thought it was July. I, I, maybe yeah, it's just always I July in Munich. <laughs> Yeah. But also yeah. to clarify, I don't know in Dusseldorf, but at least not from memory, maybe this year has been different, but like 
usually in Pride Month, you have this big celebration of a parade and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But at least in Dusseldorf, there's a place where there's concerts and stands and you can drink beer and you can like party there. But there's no parade per se that I can actually mm -hmm. tell you that oh, it okay. happens. In Cologne, for example, it's like the massive parade that you, well, you see the... Then again, there was a demonstration on Sunday. We just don't know which one it was. That's what I mean. I don't know because I haven't really seen mm -hmm. a parade. But the one in Cologne, you know, it's like there's a parade mm -hmm. um, yeah. for the one in Cologne. Mm -hmm. So I think also every city handles, uh, again, it's not like the Pride Month, but the celebration yeah. of, of Christopher Street Day very differently. So it varies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. There's so much to talk about because like even the topic of like Christopher Street Day for me when yeah. I moved here, I was like, what is Christopher Street Day? I, don't I was understand. just going to say, but you named it kind of like, you know, we actually went to New York and I went down Christopher Street. Yeah, um, yeah. And, I went and there they, too. Yeah, ah, I see. Yeah. Ah, and, cool. Stonewall, and the Stonewall Inn. And um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that Germany adapted that name. I don't, I honestly yeah. don't know why. Because everyone in the U.S. is, I would say, I would claim knows what Stonewall is, but they don't know mm. what Chris. Uh, maybe I'm I'm not a maybe good Christmas gay. I, I, I don't. I'm not super <laughs> I'm informed. But it, I'm not super informed when it comes to all of that. But yeah, I just was interested in hearing your guys' experiences growing up queer or um, mm. ending up in in Germany and what those differences have been like for you. Because I know I have some personal stuff I can like my perspectives of having grown up in the U.S. and mm. then moving here. But I know Jen, for example, you said in Guatemala, it's. Uh, it's quite difficult. Yeah, definitely. It's like a taboo subject. I would say a lot of um, things don't get spoken about openly in Guatemala. I could say Latin America, but I don't want to overgeneralize, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. There could be exceptions to the rule, but Guatemala, I'm pretty sure. Um, and being a queer is one of them or, or stuff like that. Like if you do find a queer party, you know it just by word of mouth, uh, mm -hmm. but there is no real big announcement telling you, oh, by the way, this Friday, there's like a party just for women or just for men. You know, it's, it's very subtle, at least when mm -hmm. I was growing up there. I haven't been, to be fair, I haven't been living in Guatemala for already 12 years. Um, mm -hmm. Things could have changed, uh, but at least when I was growing up there, that was the case. Everything was all kind of like like a subculture, and you, everything was like very hidden. You wanted to go mm -hmm. um, to like a party, and like I said, it's either you found out through a friend, and then you arrive and you don't know what's going on. Is it happening? Is it not? And then suddenly a party happens, but you don't know are, are all these people part of the community or not? It's very mm -hmm. like under the the I don't yeah, yeah like subculture under the radar like, yeah. under the radar exactly yeah. Um, so of course, being uh, queer and if you're together with a, with another woman, um, it's 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 not okay. You need to mm. either present that other person as a friend, and if you live together, well, you live together with a friend. Um, and I think one movie that I saw, I oh, don't remember the name, and it's with Ellen DeGeneres, I think. Um, and there's a scene where she's living with a woman. They're married, but not by law, but just by, mm. by, by being together. They're old, mm -hmm. and one of them passes away in the garden. She does something on the ladder, and then she falls, and then she passes away. Um, and then the family comes to the house. But the thing is that when the ha family, you see the scene going between how the house was when they were living together, you know, that there's like a double bed, there's like two nightstands, there's like, it's, everything's for two people. But somehow when the family arrives, everything was set for one person. So what she had mm -hmm. to do, she, she had to like made the twin bed into a single bed, uh, mm -hmm. remove one nightstand and kind of hide that they were hide living herself. together. And when I saw this movie, I'm like, wow, I, I, oof, I cannot imagine that I find someone to love and we live together 30 plus years and then i have to hide this from from everyone and it's not yeah. legal for me to do it and also mm. move out of the house because obviously i have no right to it i was just a friend taking care of exactly her. yeah um, so so that movie kind of for me shifted a little like like mentality i don't i cannot imagine that and if i would have stayed in guatemala that kind of would have been the path that i was mm -hmm. going mm -hmm. after right um so that kind of scared me a little bit so that's also yeah. why i think one of the reasons why i d also decided to find a place that um was a little bit more open about that Mm -hmm. So how was that for you in Guatemala? Were you out publicly or like to your family at least? Or how did you handle that in your everyday life? Yeah, so I would say every journey is different. But for me, the journey happened that I wasn't so sure that I was uh, gay, right? Like okay. I wasn't sure if I was queer or not. Um, right. Again, because I, I grew up in a very um, religious uh, family. So of mm -hmm. course, it's even on top of that, something you don't talk mm -hmm. about. Um, and so it took me some years to actually realize, oh, wait, I actually might um, also like women, you know, and maybe that is okay. And that was a very, very long, hard process. But when I came to that realization, I had a like a personal conversation with all my closest friends. And I came into the conversation with the expectation that they would say, you know what, Jen, like, screw you. Like, I don't want anything mm -hmm. to do with you anymore. However, everyone was completely nice about it and open about it. And they're like, Jen, mm -hmm. no worries. Like, you know, we still love you. Uh, and that was for me was very reassuring. Without yeah. that support, I don't know what would have what would have yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, so the coming out, I was out, so to say, but not like super loud and proud, you know, like, right. like just for your flag inner circle. 
Exactly. Yeah. Did your family know? Yeah, my family uh, knew coming out to my family was a different story. Um, But I would say it's still a process, an ongoing process. It hasn't been easy. um, Mm -hmm. And I think it still takes some work and and, and some things to 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 figure out. Mm -hmm. But um, again, because it's it comes from a very traditional religious place and that's not always so easy to break out of. Yeah, I yeah. actually had that written down in my notes because I was like, yeah, Guatemala, I'm assuming mm. that you guys are just as religious as, I don't really know, but I'm assuming like Latin America is in general, like very religious yeah. and Catholic. Exactly. And, um, I kind of assumed that that would probably play in there a lot. Yeah. Um, for yeah, sure. Josh, sorry, I, I, I interrupted know, you because yeah, I know no, you you're have fine. experience. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, first of all, thanks for sharing that because obviously that's a very personal piece of information, mm. but I think it's... um. It's interesting to hear other people's stories because you can identify with them. And I mean, that's something that I identify with a lot is Mm. um, I grew up in a very religious community as well. And that was something that was very difficult for me to accept for myself and be okay Mm. with. And then through conversations, I remember sitting down with Feli at one point to tell her and like that was a big deal for me. Mm. Um, And then also through the process with family, it's 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 a process, you know. Um, Mm. and everyone needs their time and conversations aren't always easy and don't go the way that you want necessarily. But, um, it's, I think that was personally for me, part of the reason why I ended up coming to Germany as well was Mm. for me, it was a space where I could be myself and not have the tie. I I don't want to phrase it like I was running away from something necessarily, but running to something that I didn't have. And, Mm. um, yeah, Germany for me, at least, um, provided a place where I didn't have to worry about how it would affect my family or if friends wouldn't like me, so on and so forth. Mm. Which then brings me to you, Yvonne, you having grown up here and mm. for us like the Hochburg of uh, <laughs> like <laughs> like the, the bastion of uh, freedom and not having to worry about, uh, about I don't know, discrimination per se can be sometimes a perception. But how was, how was mm. it for you? Um, so I would say it was definitely easier than that's uh, what, what, what Jen or you just described just because um, my family was not very religious, mm. um, which is a big factor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it was also not like, so first of all, I had the same process. So I also first had to realize for myself, which mm. I mean, took me some time, frankly, <laughs> in retrospective, I could have realized earlier, but I just didn't, you know? <laughs> so so um, I actually realized it for the first time that 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 could be the case on my very first cruise ship contract. Mm. Yeah. Um, just because their, um, you know, queerism was just a lot more um, out and about. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely not a taboo on the country. I think a lot of queers are on ships. Um, and it's uh, and actually one uh, one cruise, so one week. Um, it was not a traditional cruise, but uh, we, had, we had a charter from the R family, like from Rosie O'Donnell. Ah. And, and that was just for me, it was like, Eye wow. opening, maybe also, because right? for suddenly the entire ship, like 2,000, 3,000 people were flooded with queer families, like really also with the little kids and everything. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, it was a completely different program. It was a completely different vibe. The vibe just changed like a 180 degree. Mm-hmm. And I literally, I was just like walking around. I was like, where, where am I? Like, what, what is, what is happening? Uh-huh. Um, but in a positive way. Hmm. Um, and I, it made me super curious. Um, and then I realized like, oh, that, okay, like there might be some triggers within me. Um, mm-hmm. And then after that, like half a year later or so, I went to New York to do my semester abroad there, to mm-hmm. New York city and i told myself okay now or never it's like your playground go discover <laughs> yourself again same as you just described there is no family no friends really that um that i don't even want to wor- use the word judge because i would not have been judged but just yeah. for myself i feel like there were no like ties that space. didn't have to um, explain myself i could just go mm-hmm. and and there i actually did just go and went out to to bars and and met amazing people who kind of like adopted me and took me to mm-hmm. all all kinds of places and events and um, that's pretty much where I came out to myself mm-hmm. uh, and and was fine with it and realized also yes this this is this is who I am and this is who I enjoy being with and then that was it yeah and then I came back and uh, first told my friends and they kind of like expected to uh, and <laughs> they're like about and, time um, and then <laughs> and i told my sister and she she loved it and you know also like totally like yay woo cool mm-hmm. um and then i told my parents which actually took quite uh, mm-hmm. some um, courage for me and mm-hmm. um there was a bit of a split reaction my dad also was waiting for it um he kind of like was yeah ex- expecting it because he always kept also asking in the past and uh, well, do, you know, do you have a boyfriend so and mm. I was just I kept saying mm, no <laughs> um, and need to say I had boyfriends because I was part of my like 
testing journey. myself yeah. out, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and my mom was, I would say, like, she struggled for a day. And then she came around. <laughs> okay. Which is super nice, yeah. What you guys are saying about like uh, this whole like reinventing yourself thing, like going to a new place. I feel like um, that I really had that too, even though of course mm. I didn't even have the whole like um, discovering my sexuality thing because I was always But in other areas. very sure. Yeah. Exactly. Like that's yeah. just the thing mm. I feel like in general that is uh, very tempting about going abroad um, that like, agree. had me like stay here because uh, I suddenly realized oh wow I can just like be whoever I want and I don't have like my childhood friends and like this hmm. this framework and my family that kind of like yeah. dictate who they always thought I was or like you know hmm. who I used to be maybe I want to change though and um, yeah. Especially in Germany, I feel like in the U.S. in general, I personally feel like it's it's a lot easier here with the general American mindset to just change things, change your opinions, mm. change your preferences, whatever, and reinvent yourself. But of course, then at the same time, you have those communities that kind of you talked about, Josh, where like mm-hmm. a lot of places, especially in like um, suburbia and like more rural areas in the U.S., especially here in the Midwest mm. also, are very close minded and very like mm. small town vibes where it's not as easy to reinvent yourself but if you come to like a more like a city environment that i did here in cincinnati um and you find your your community it's it's definitely uh feel like everyone just encourages you to be your best self and Mm. i never really had that feeling in germany but of course it probably would have been different if i had moved to germany so yeah that was always just my my perception that like Hmm. Germany isn't that good about that about the reinventing yourself but I think the main part is really just going to a new place I was just gonna say I think it's always the home place that is not so good at whatever and the going abroad no matter where place is where you kind of like spread your wings and fly in a way Um, and I wouldn't even say where you can be who you want to be but where you can just be who you are because Mm -hmm. maybe at home you had to hide a certain part Mm -hmm. or maybe at home you you still exactly behaving the same way it's just being received differently Mm -hmm. because it's a different culture Right. right so I think that is um, one of the main beautiful parts of, of going abroad um, but also the kind of like dangerous parts because once you've like, like passed that. that threshold <laughs> um, you will never see your home in the same eyes and yeah, you might have difficulties connecting with childhood friends who don't have that experience yeah. um, right. but but hey but that's part of life isn't it yeah, <laughs> exactly definitely. and I think um, you hit on a good point Feely is it's a matter of finding your community too like mm. I think I probably could have been very happy in Cincinnati mm. with being gay and whatnot but I it wasn't I didn't have the community there that I've found here and I think yeah. that makes such a big difference as well um, definitely But and that's just what we said earlier. Like once you have your friend circle, it's like hard to get out of there. Um, like what we said about Germans just like being stuck with their friends. Like if you grow up there and you stay in your hometown, you're just it's hard to just like be like, oh, I'm not going to hang out with any of you anymore. I'm going to find a new community now. That's just <laughs> yeah, that's a very not- <laughs> tough step to take. You don't do that yeah. usually. And same yeah. with family, too. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <So. laughs> I think one one question I have for you guys, though, is especially from the Munich perspective, being in, mm. in Bavaria, which is more conservative. Um, do you, but you guys are in Düsseldorf and C- Cologne is obviously in the Rheinland is known for being very, very open minded when it comes to LGBTQ issues. Um, do you guys notice or have you have you faced much discrimination or really has that been a, a topic for you? So to be very honest, we've we've talked about this, I think, also privately and whatnot, and mm-hmm. we have never really experienced, I would say, like a big confrontation where someone super discriminates us, against us. Mm-hmm. I don't know to what extent maybe we've received some comments on the street because I also don't understand everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily tell you, oh, yeah, it's been like a tough break or it's been like super hard. Um, but I think, I don't know, it really depends. Again, it comes like, how do you portray yourself to to the people around you in a way because mm-hmm. I think without e- even being queer but if you go out on the street with a super rude attitude most likely you will receive a super rude attitude back mm-hmm. but if you go out on the street and try to be as friendly as you can most likely you will also receive a very friendly response um, the, the one thing I could uh, mention is that we went to like a, um, a t-shirt uh, how do you say it? it's like a t-shirt shop <laughs> um, and mm-hmm. there one lady was helping us and then she said oh here you're and she didn't know what to call me you're a uh, And she said something like friend know, or whatever. Did you say partner? Did you say begleitung? Partner or something. I think she said begleitung. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And at some like, point, no. I kind of like, mm-hmm. like responded, meine Frau. 
and yeah. and my then wife. she she couldn't she couldn't grasp that she couldn't respond i mean she was very very friendly and really mm -hmm. tried her best to um not discriminate but she couldn't i think get the word frau over her lips mm. okay. um so she chose any other word possible um and at some point in the end so we went there a couple of times so and, and the last time she actually said everything she said für ihre freundin frau mann partner whatever <laughs> just because she did not know what to say so, oh gosh so that's the, I mean, so obviously there. But that was really not out of being rude, sorry. Yeah, yeah. it's just maybe because she's like never helpless. maybe. Yes. Yeah, helpless. And again, I don't know, what we've been experiencing is like a lot of curiosity when someone mm -hmm. probably meets us for the first time. After some time, they really ask like, so like, how is it being like queer? Like, like who, the typical question is like, who is the man, for example? And oh. then we have to mm -hmm. explain, well, is, it doesn't work like that really, you know? So maybe these kind of questions, sometimes out of curiosity and lack of information, I would say, but mm -hmm. not necessarily like discriminating and super offensive against us. Yeah, not at mm -hmm. all, actually. Mm. Do you Ooh, ever feel like you get weird good. looks? <laughs> weird mm, looks? No. Um, so You got weird looks in the US, in Florida. <laughs> ah, actually, yeah. in the US, I felt more uncomfortable holding mm -hmm. holding her hand in, 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 in Florida than holding your hand here yeah. in, in Germany. Okay. Yeah. Funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, I think it, from my personal experience, I would, I would put Latin America, then the US, then Germany when <laughs> it comes to acceptance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which is so uh, crazy because for me, New York, it was like such a beautiful, warm, yeah. open. But New York is not the US, I know. It's just like yeah. if you say Berlin is Germany, it, it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for me, it was so much warmer and more open minded and so much more inclusive, the community, mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. here in Germany, mm -hmm. um, from, from my experience, right? Yeah. But how about yeah. you, Josh? Have you received uh, discrimination at all in Munich? <sighs> I mean, so that's like the tricky thing to say, because I mean, for me, it's been more of a recent coming out process, like in my public mm. life, I would say, um, like my close friends knew, but at work, I wasn't out. Um, mm. And I worked in the countryside with some more conservative mm. people, and I didn't feel comfortable being out there. And there were definitely some comments that were made. Um, mm. I mean, yeah, there were people who made comments about like, for example, one story, and I called Faley after this, because I was so upset by it. Mm. Um, but I was in the office once and some coworkers were talking about a, a soccer game that took place on the weekend. And there was one player who was apparently really weak. Um, mm. And my, my boss at the time actually said, Der war um, the so, 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 so yeah, he was probably, he was definitely a fag. Um, mm. And I said something in the moment, like, Hey, like, that's not okay. You can't say that. Mm. And his response was, um, what Josh, they're all, um, verweichlicht, uh, Softened. Yeah, the, the, yeah, they're all they're all softies anyway. Um, hmm. So like that was a really off-putting experience for me, um, and that was actually part of why I decided to change jobs was to try to be in a more hmm. inclusive environment, um, just because I felt really uncomfortable there after that. And in that moment, I actually came out to uh, came out to my boss afterwards. I pulled him aside and I just said, "Hey, just so you oh, know, wait. like." <laughs> that's and what not did he say? They? Well, how did uh, he respond? He apologized, um, okay. and I think and I think that's one thing. And it's not an excuse by any means, but a lot of people justify making those type of comments with mm. like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. It's just a way mm. to talk about someone who is weak and, and, and so on and so forth. But I didn't mean it as a derogatory statement, but it is inherently a derogatory statement. So Totally. <laughs> I, I agree. But I also agree that this is um, a very, like, a, I would say, a societal stigma, um, especially yeah. when it comes mm. to soccer, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, that it just, it, it flows very easily from the lips mm. without even knowing what you're saying or understanding what that means. But it's just something that you say. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, even with this simpler example, the typical, you throw like a girl. Right. Like, what yeah. is that even right. supposed to mean? Also, yeah. you know, so exactly. some phrases are just some, sometimes so embedded. It's not an excuse by any means. No, right? absolutely. But sometimes exactly. you say some things and it's like, oh, wait, that that's not OK. Yeah. <laughs> After like yeah. years of probably like saying it or hearing it, which is. Yeah. And yeah, I exactly. just noticed because we had a similar conversation with a um, with a, a friend, well, an acquaintance we've met once. Haha, <laughs> German difference between friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, twice, actually. I'm Bekannter. Um, or I'm yeah, Bekannter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, he uh, now on, at his work has to um, really be careful in choosing his words. Mm. Um, and he can no longer or should no longer uh, refer to a group of people in which there are women as guys, but yeah. as folks. And I actually had to smirk because it's like so stuck in my brain, uh, brain this conversation because you said you guys and you're talking to three girls. 
<laughs> exactly. Um, so, so in my mind, I was just like, this is so funny because it's just so embedded in the yeah. in the language, in the cultural language, and it's mm-hmm. so hard to take out, yeah. and it requires yeah. so much awareness, hmm. um, and, yeah. and such on so many levels. And and LGBTQ is one very big level yeah. um, that we just need to like you did. You need to, uh, you made him aware, and uh, that just takes a lot of work. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, he apo- he apologized in the moment, obviously, and was very, very embarrassed. So I'm appreciative mm-hmm. of him recognizing his mistake. But, um, but no, actually, when I was emailing you with you guys, bah, with you, <laughs> <laughs> with you, I wrote you guys, and I re- recognized. Oh shoot, I probably should have just said you or you all, because that's actually something at my job too that they're trying mm-hmm. to make people aware of. Is mm-hmm. I mean, you guys is what we tend to say, at least in the U.S. to, exactly. to refer to a group of people, but that's not that's not necessarily inclusive. And yeah, a lot of people will say that those that's nitpicky and like hmm. get over it type deal. But I think it's, it's important to people. And it, it, hmm. if I can do something to make someone feel more comfortable or more accepted and more at ease, then why wouldn't I try is my perspective yeah. on it. It's actually very, very interesting for me because like I am very big on like language has power. And like, you know, I even like sometimes tell people like when they because as you said, there's so many things that are just embedded in the language. And when someone says something like, uh, don't be such a pussy for example something mm, like that I'm example, like yeah. what do you mean by that like uh, mm. the, that's actually a very strong organ or like yeah. what, do you, what are you referring <laughs> to like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah or that, it's like uh, um, I would rather you like uh, phrase it differently uh, even though mm. I know you didn't mean anything by it like mm-hmm. nothing discriminating but language has power um, and I never until just now I don't think I've ever had that conversation with anyone or seen it in, on like my social media bubble. Um, this whole topic about you guys, I literally mm. never thought about this yeah. until just now. And I've never felt discriminated by it either. But Me I think neither. it's also Me neither. It's it's just, like, maybe not yeah, my first the language yeah. also. Yeah. I think I just like accepted it as like, it means ihr in German, which yeah. like yeah. in English, you really can only, if you say you, it can be confusing. If you hmm. say y'all, it's just a little bit more Southern <laughs> and like you guys, is just the more like Northern uh, yeah, yeah. version yeah. of y'all. Sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of y'all, yeah. I also don't feel discriminated by it, but it's again, going back to the same point when we talk about some things Absolutely. which is so embedded Absolutely. in language that it takes, like you said, a lot of awareness just to, you know, oh, actually that's not okay, right? And it's a lot of effort. It's a progress, of course, to... Mm-hmm. Even for for oneself to realize, oh man, I have to say that different now. See, oh man, oh, <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> okay, no, let's, let's go. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, I'm just I'm just honestly surprised that that never even like occurred to me. Or yeah. and I, as I said, like I am part of like this more uh, like leftist like liberal social media bubble where like you know mm. a lot of topics are discussed and mm-hmm. that's just never even crossed my path. Yeah. And I'm just currently like oh, kind of mind blown by it because of course, guys, yeah, I never yeah. Like, just never even like realized. Guy, yeah, because guy, guys, of course, are men usually, men. Yeah. but you yeah. guys for me is such like its own term it's that I never yeah. really made this connection whatsoever. <laughs> I love that you're, 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 you need I'm some very time mind to blown right now. I'm gonna have to go like after this interview. I have, I'm gonna have to tell Ben and be like, you know what? I just realized. <laughs> that okay? One thing that really blew my mind too, and it's not gender or sexuality related, but. Uh, do you guys are you so are you all familiar <laughs> are you all familiar with the the term gypped or to gyp someone to gyp no, no i have not I'm heard not. that it's before. it's a it 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 means to rip someone off or like take advantage of someone ah, Is it okay. like from gypsy and it comes from gypsy uh, oh. and i didn't realize that um for the longest mm. time so i mean it's not a word that i use all too often um uh, but yeah yeah oh, I don't, that's I, interesting I think, I think there are so many words in language that are just embedded in that we're not People don't think twice about... um, Yeah, well, I don't know if this is a myth or not, but when I was living in Budapest, some Hungarians told me, I cannot verify if it's 100% true, that whenever you, like, eat something, you know, and it goes the wrong way and you start, like, choking, Mm -hmm. they actually say, oh, it goes down the gypsy way. It's actually the way... It's actually the saying that they say when something gets, like, choked, you know? And that, again, it's like, oh... uh, it's, is, is that okay to say that? Obviously not, right? But it's so, yeah. it's like this line word that they just say automatically without even right. giving more thought to it anymore, right? Right, mm-hmm. right. And that goes in a whole, I mean, then we have to then we have change then. everything, right? Then we yeah. have to create a new language in that sense, which is, yeah. in my point of view, also exaggerated. Um, but let's just start with an awareness level. I think that's, that's yeah. a good yeah. start. <laughs> Especially, I feel <laughs> like when it's obviously insults, like schwuchtel, mm-hmm. or like growing mm-hmm. up in school, like it was normal to us to say yeah. behindert, for example, which mm-hmm. is also yes. not at all okay. Which but is not like, okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but at the time, like, 
Hmm. I was really aware of it. Like my my friends hmm. weren't really aware of it, and nobody, of course, meant anything by it. But I think that's like the first thing is like when it's an obvious insult, you yeah. should not use words like those that yeah. actually yeah. discriminate Agreed. actual minorities. Yeah, I totally agree. So one thing, Jen, that I think a lot of people are probably asking themselves is you mentioned that you lived in Hungary and Budapest for a while. And obviously, uh, recently, there have been a lot of decisions around uh, LGBTQ issues in Hungary mm. that have been very uh, discriminatory. And mm. you have the experience of growing up in Guatemala and then moving to Germany. But how was your experience in Hungary? Was that did you notice a big difference between there and in Germany? Yes, and then definitely. Also your home country? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like again, I was dating a girl in Hungary, which didn't work out. Um, and luckily. there, mm, luckily, <laughs> <laughs> and there again, it was this. Uh, we were again in this uh, your friends kind of thing. So when mm, we would mm-hmm. visit the family, I was the friend. Um, I don't know if until today she actually came out to her family or not because we don't keep in touch. But. Um, and I, again, that's also one of the other reasons why I left Budapest. So I saw Budapest as my like stepping stone into Europe, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. I never, it was never my intent to, to stay there for a super long term um, of time because again, mentality wise, they're so different. And, and I would say almost everything. And a lot of, even back then, there was a lot of discrimination against the LGBTQ community. And I would say even protests throughout the city. Um, I think there was one time that there was the parade, which was approved for that year. And then counterparts came to kind of like attack kind of the people at the parade. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was like, wow, I I cannot, like this is, this is definitely not a place that I can call home for the Mm -hmm. long term. Mm -hmm. Um, So that obviously was another big uh, factor um, why why I moved to Germany, which mind you back in the day, Germany, when I moved here, um, also having like this AIA partnership, like this um, official marriage. Hmm? Oh, AIA partnership. Did I say that wrong? I uh, mean the official marriage? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, that's AIA, yeah. Yeah, the AIA, sorry. That, but before it was like an official marriage, there was just the partnership. Mm. I combined both words. Mm-hmm. Um, but already there was a step towards the right direction. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. for me was already good because at least it was recognized somehow by law and by the people living in the country that it's okay to be with another uh, same-sex um, partner. Yeah. Um, yeah, so definitely Budapest for me was a big culture shock in the opposite way. Because mm-hmm. in Guatemala, I think there was a, a parade maybe once or twice, if I remember. It was very small. It obviously made big uh, media um, like outcries, like how is this is even allowed in the city and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But to see the extent that I saw in Budapest, where there were actually like a group of people going specifically to attack the parade, mm-hmm. was for me just another mm-hmm. level of, of discrimination, yeah. I would say. That's that's crazy, especially now. I don't know if you guys saw the news story in the U.S., but there was a group that was uh, preparing to go protest. A, a, it was like a small little militia that was going to protest a pride mm. pride event as well. Oh, no, I didn't see it. For all of our listeners who don't know this, actually, because you just mentioned how it was uh, the um, Lebenspartnerschaft first, right? Mm. Or what was it officially called? Lebenspartnerschaft, yeah. yeah. Um, and actually, Germany didn't um, legalize gay marriage until 2017, which you might yeah. think is, is pretty late. That was after the US and after many other Western countries. So that actually took a long time in Germany, even though I would also say like growing up, society has been pretty tolerant or accepting mm. before that. But um, the actual like legalization came like rather rather yeah. late actually so just to get give you guys like a timeline there um yeah. as to like yeah when things changed in germany legally and yeah. actually fun fact when we got engaged that was uh, we only had the levens partnerschaft and after we got we already had like our standesamt appointment to do the the partnerschaft they announced that they were going to officially be the a so we had to get married twice well, three times in total, but that's a different story. I but actually saw twice a video. With yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, you could have probably just like moved it back, but I'm assuming since like a wedding takes a lot of planning, that was yeah, already also, too late. Well, yes. bureaucracy, I would say. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and just to, to translate for a few, uh, for those of you who don't speak German, I don't think we've said it yet, but uh, Lebenspartnerschaft is a civil mm-hmm. union. Yes, right. very good. So sorry. Um, yes, yes. No, it's, it's perfectly fine. And my fun fact is also related to that. Um, in the case in the U.S. that made uh, gay marriage legal or same-sex marriage legal um, is Obergefell versus something I forget the other um, the other name. But he's actually he went to UC, so the university that uh, Feli and I. I did to. not know that. And he huh. and he studied mm-hmm. and he studied in the same uh, German department as we did. So when I actually Ooh. Josh, gra- why did I not know that? <laughs> when I when I graduated from or we had some sort of event, it was an awards ceremony. He actually came and spoke. Um, but yeah. 
And mm-hmm. it goes back to what the what you were saying about one of your biggest fears as far as someone being or your partner being sick and or you just not being able to visit mm-hmm. them in the hospital, for example. That's exactly yeah. what happened to him. Um, yeah. Which but, is, I mean, that is super heartbreaking, out, yeah. I think. Yeah. It's Which so is actually there. now something that the new German government is trying to um, implement for everyone, like who, mm-hmm. single people, people who just have like close friends to, I forget what it's called, and they haven't established it yet, but I know that it was mm-hmm. part of their um, Koalitionsvertrag to um, basically move into the direction of, uh, what's Koalitionsvertrag again? <laughs> uh, Co- coalition agreement. Coalition yes, thank you. Coalition contract. agreement. <laughs> Yeah. Um, to make that possible for every even single person to have this mm. one person, whether it's a friend or could be anyone, to have them like legally registered as your person of contact your, your, your or person, yeah, yeah, spokesperson yeah. who could, in case mm. of emergency, act on your behalf or mm. you know have like certain rights about you. Yeah. yeah, I think because like the society in Germany, especially, but in many Western uh, countries, is going more towards like being single and not having a mm. big family, not really going into this like traditional marriage um, construct. So um, I thought Which that was sense. like really really cool too in Germany that they're trying to yeah. do that. It totally but. makes sense. I would also just add that um, even though I'm very happy in Germany living, I think what I is like the best version of my life. I would say the system is obviously not perfect. Um, yeah. When we went to register our marriage, I remember the woman had problems because like in the system, she couldn't put like Frau and Frau because or something. Because it was so new. It was so mm. new. Yeah. Oh, so even though the law had passed, it still took some time for the system to like accept uh, two Fraus, you know, like you have like a drop down and then yeah. to accept yeah. both. Um, there's still some things that obviously need work. Um, well, there's a lot. I mean, the system in general is not perfect, yeah, yeah, right? Yes. But it's it's but to it's a level where it, it makes it very livable. Hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But also, we have friends who, um, you know, there's still also a big work to do in terms of adoption rights, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, because that's not the same yet as with heterosexual um, couples in that sense. Um, but also, the new coalition has plans, uh, I believe, to to fix that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. I would say in any country. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but it's pretty livable here. Yeah. I would say. I just wanted to say, like, it's not just sunshine and rainbows. Exactly. Absolutely. It's, yes. <laughs> but it's still enough sunshine and enough rainbows. You know. <laughs> is there actually anything that um, you like? One tip or like a few tips that you would give to other queer expats that are thinking mm-hmm. about moving to Germany? Something that they should keep in mind or just like something that you would share from your personal experience? I mean, I would say it, again, everybody is different, mm-hmm. right? And just because you're queer doesn't mean you suddenly tick all these boxes. I mean, that's yeah. of course. Just, yeah. just, you know, just not the case. Yeah. But if you're looking for being able to live your true self and being able to to you know, not, not be thinking about what do my neighbors think whatsoever, then obviously even in Germany, cities are a better place for you to live than rural areas. Mm. Um, I would say that that's still it's still a case. Um, mm. I mean, I don't know, um, Josh in, in Munich, obviously it's it should be hopefully um, fine, but your experience more in the rural area. Yeah, I've never had any issues in the city. It's it's it was only in yeah. more rural areas. Exactly, yeah. which kind of makes sense. So that would be, I would say, um, a tip to to stick to not even the biggest cities, but just cities per se, you know, where there's yeah. maybe also a university, it's just a bit mm. younger or whatever, you know, not just, don't pick a dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dusseldorf, <laughs> it's a city. <laughs> pick, if you pick a dwarf, it's Dusseldorf. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, dwarf means village. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And what about you, Jen? Uh, yeah, I would say to meet, uh, at, at least from the girl's perspective, right, like to meet other women who are also queer, my strategy was to join sports uh, for <laughs> mm-hmm. Eins because mm. from my opinion, you know, like back in Guatemala, that's where you would usually meet people. Mm-hmm. Didn't work successfully in Germany because it turns out a lot of German women are very sporty. So uh, <laughs> you would actually join the Verein, there would be a lot of women and maybe none of them would be queer, which is also fine, right? It's super yeah. cool that everyone does sports. But just to mention that my strat- that strategy would not necessarily work and the mm-hmm. best way to meet people I would say is to just um, actually go and mingle with different crowds. Uh, if I, and I think it's amazing for meeting like-minded people and to even make friends, even if you don't mm-hmm. find like a partner, um, definitely joining local communities um, or events, you know, Facebook group, I think it's a big place where people hang out. Recently, we discovered there's also like an LGBTQ Dusseldorf community, which international one, international one yeah. which apparently opened up quite recently. Um, yeah. So that would be my advice, like to meet someone. It's not... I think like in anywhere else in the world, uh, meeting someone for dating is not super easy, but it's definitely doable if you take the right strategy. 
I also just wanted to mention real quick, I know quite a few people from tiny little villages that are very, very open as well. So just to, just to give the countryside, uh, not hate on them. A point. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, no. I no, just would say that's... it's more... It's more common, but yes, I mean, not that yes. any of us were hating on them. I just would say it's more common in the Thanks for saving side. me there. Yes, um, there was yeah. not discriminating the, the countryside. It's just the um, the course. chances also of meeting people and mingling. Yes. And, and exactly. That's bigger in cities. Yeah. Yeah. You might get some, like, m maybe a few more weird looks on the countryside, yeah. um, especially maybe, yeah. in more conservative areas. But also just in general, um, for those of you who've never been to Germany, Germans usually stare a lot. Um, and that's just, like, yes. part mm. of our... Um, social behavior and I know a few people who thought that they were being stared at or looked at just because they didn't speak German and I was like no they're just looking at you just because yeah. they're looking at me too um, so <laughs> if you're queer and you're like maybe insecure and you're from an environment where you're mm. very careful if Germans stare at you for you know something holding a uh, same sex person's hand or something like that um, it's probably not even because of that it's probably just yeah. because they're germans <laughs> i would 100 percent agree actually we had a meetup recently with some of uh our youtube uh community and there there was a guy queer i think also and he said you know thank you for that one video that you said where germans stare because when mm -hmm. i got here i felt so stared that i was like oh my god i knew i'm so glad i knew about this before otherwise i would have felt super uncomfortable because the german stare is really like a, it's a thing, thing. It's yeah. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> many For Germans sure. like don't see that, even though like so many internationals talk about it, and like many Germans mm. still disagree. But no, like I'm, I'm glad that Yvonne agrees too. Um, it's definitely I a do thing it. And I'm a victim. <laughs> of it. She's a victim. But, but the thing is also, I mean, that we, when we discuss it in our video, it's it's not again like you said, Philly. It's not to be rude. On the contrary, mm. it's mainly out of curiosity. Mm. Um, I also remember a story um, that you often share to explain mm. it is that. Um, like a like a mom and a daughter were on a, on a tram. It was a comment actually on YouTube, yeah. but it was like the mom and the grandmother, I think, and they're in a bus and there was a person of color sitting in front of them and the grandma would just like stare like at her. And the granddaughter was like, Grand like, Granny, you can't do that. Like, stop staring at her. And her reaction was like, no, wait, I've never seen such a beautiful person in my life. Like, she's so pretty in every single way. So, you know, like that was what the granny was looking at. Like, wow, she's like mm -hmm. so perfect. Uh, versus maybe for this person was super uncomfortable. Like, dude, why are you mm. staring at me, right? Mm. Um, yeah. But it's a, it's a thing. The German stare is definitely a thing. <laughs> Yeah, and there's like this whole thing if you like walk past someone like um, towards each other on the sidewalk or something, Germans often look you in the eye and then you're like looking back and it's kind of like a staring contest. <laughs> Whereas like in the US, people usually just like yeah, look yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you greet awesome each other fun. briefly in the US because yeah. like in a lot of neighborhoods, like people are very friendly, but then you don't keep looking them in the yeah. eye after that. Yeah. And Germans often don't even greet each other, especially when it's just strangers. They just look at each other and it's like a, it's yeah. its own a cultural difference <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah okay so i think we're pretty much through with all of our questions the only question i have left is uh which language do you guys speak to each other i have the answer for that yvonne said it very nicely the other day and it's like infused english <laughs> okay so that, infused by what <laughs> infused by german and guatemalan which i wouldn't necessarily say it's like all spanish but like guatemalan sayings so we uh -huh. speak english at home mainly but somehow some words from guatemala or german pop uh -huh. into the mix um get integrated and it becomes this infused language yeah <laughs> okay so like not relate. just denglish or spanglish it's like spang denglish something yeah like that. exactly <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and it's mainly like exclamations that 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 happen very often like to emphasize or or whatever or for example i hardly ever say yes i usually just say see sí. Mm -hmm. um, little things like that um, that just gets combined, yeah. 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 I also really cool. have a new a new German term, right? Like when there's like some, like let's say we went to a town and it was kind of like dead, there was nothing. I call it the Sappendusta Dorf. So that is Zappenduster? something. Dorf, I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so Sappendusta means pitch black, um, but, it ah, also okay, mean, yeah. but it can also mean like, uh, it can also mean total hose, like there's nothing, nothing uh -huh. happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but Jen loves to take these words that she loves very much and then combine a new word. So now we always say, ah, it's Zappendusta Dorf. <laughs> Of course, you create these like new long words that then exactly. everyone else is going to hate us for. But <laughs> I mean, that's the beauty about the German language is that you can do that in German and yes, just create you your own words. So, yeah. so uh, Yvonne, do you speak uh, Spanish then? I also, do speak uh, some Spanish. I would not call okay. myself fluent per se, but I do have enough to converse also with your family. Yeah. Um, okay. I can follow conversations, depends on what kind of Spanish it is and how fast mm -hmm. they speak. Um, but one-on-one <laughs> but I, I, -on -one conversation I can hold. Um, okay. uh, yeah. Do not you stand up and hide in the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, cool. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing all of that about your personal lives. I felt like going through your YouTube channel, it wasn't like that personal. Of course, you guys bring personal things in there, but I think we made this conversation a, a <laughs> little bit more personal and actually learned new information, um, which was very interesting for me. Um, and yeah, I'm very glad that we were able to bring you guys on the podcast for the last day of Pride Month. Whoa. So that's really cool. <laughs> happy Pride to everyone also. Yes. Um, and uh, happy uh, podcast coming out, Josh. I thought this oh, yeah. was a special, <laughs> special uh, episode. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Congrats for being who you are. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm not one to make a big deal out of it, you know. Exactly. No, I, I know. That's why I'm making who a big deal out of it for you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. But anyways, but thank you both folks for having us on the show <laughs> both thank folks, you very yeah. much both folks we definitely yeah. enjoyed the conversation and if you are ever in Dusseldorf then please let us know yes we'll do love to I've share. actually never been to Dusseldorf I've uh, been to what wow. was it called Langenfeld it's, it's like mm -hmm. in between okay. and then yeah. we went to Cologne for one day and that was it that was my whole experience mm. in that area so um, well, yeah, there's more to, to see I would say even more experience it's mm. not you know so much about the sights here it's more about the feeling experience yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Dusseldorf is ein Gefühl <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people say about Cologne, actually. Exactly. I, I, I also say it. You can use your the saying. Yeah. The Rheinland is a your fill. There you there go. You go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's better. That's more inclusive. <laughs> yeah, well... To everyone who watched or listened to the episode, thank you guys so much for following along. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as we did. Um, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our <laughs> channel. Um, leave a comment if you have any kind of follow-up questions for Jen and Yvonne. And of course, follow their channel and their website also. We're going to link everything in the description box and the podcast show notes. Um, and if you're listening on the audio streaming platforms, um, you can follow us. You can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can leave a rating on Spotify. Um, that helps us a lot so yeah thank you guys so much for your support and we will be back in two weeks on Thursday See tschüss you then. tschüss See you tschüss <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say to you is there like a Guatemalan way of saying goodbye uh, except for uh, yeah it's actually uh, orale it's the way you say orale like